righty then. Video out of the way. I'm not really sure which of us okay. it is, but somebody's blowing on their mic a lot. And <laughs> I'll try it. Might That's, be me. I don't so, know. I was laughing during the video because as soon as I hit play on the video, I could hear. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. No. Uh, so anyway. I am your father. It is episode 49. We got two weeks to episode 50. We have been doing this for 50 episodes. It's a long time. We're going to try yes. to do something special for episode 50. We'll see if it pans out. <laughs> um, we'll see what happens. Today, yeah. we're talking about something totally not super special for most people, uh, but <laughs> near and dear to my own personal heart, which is role-playing. In particular, we're going to look at role-playing without an RP server. They have said that RP servers are a thing that could happen in Camelon Unchained, but only if there is a demand for it, if there is a real need for it. Uh, in my personal opinion, I don't I don't think that we've seen the volume of role players and the high level of activity at this point that would probably motivate them to really want to work on that. So we want to discuss what happens if there isn't an RP server. What could they still do for us? I mean, all three of us, I think um, you could you could easily say are like tabletop role players play D and D. Uh, yep. World of Darkness, yep. all sorts of things. Some oh, of us yes. have done some real life LARPing, uh, and <laughs> indeed, uh, you know. And for some of us, also MMORP is totally a thing that we do and do quite a lot of. That's probably how I got, I would say, initially most active in MMOs. Originally, <laughs> was actually role playing in WoW. So, uh, what we're gonna look at is. What they could do, primarily if there were no servers, and then also what other things they could do to just kind of cater to our peers. We've talked about some of this a little bit on and off, and so let's just get into it. Talking about servers specifically, I think one of the main reasons that the conversation of uh, having an RP server in the first place, besides just to concentrate the role players into the same place, is griefing. And so I thought. Why don't we start with asking the question, what is griefing in a PvP game like Camelot Unchained? That's a hard question, because yeah. usually in my experience, uh, in our experience, um, uh, griefing has tend to be more uh, self-faction inflicted. Yes. Meaning that, you know, let's say if we go back to, to SWOTOR or World of Warcraft, we're role playing in a cantina or an inn type place that our own faction players are sitting there running, standing on tables, doing their own emotes and interrupting the RP going on. Yeah. That's in PvP, that seems maybe a little less so, especially in Camelot and Chained, where griefing might be more of the the other factions interfering and it's hard to say interfering because it's pvp yeah. but yeah. i think in the um, pvp context you really can't have griefing from the opposite faction it, it yeah. yeah they kill it's, you that's it's what they part, do yeah. <laughs> that's, that's their job it's 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 part of the of the um, of the fact that playing in a uh, pvp game if you're available it's, it's your fault would more <laughs> your faction dragging the other one to the area where you're you're role playing, then again, it's the game. Right. It's harder um, for me. Griefing really comes down to: can you prevent it? Can you? Um, well, it's it's not just preventing it because that's part of the CSE's job, but can you retaliate? Yeah. Because if you can retaliate, it's PvP. It's not griefing. Griefing is really in C in CU since you're not going to have friendly fire in faction fire fire it's going to be your faction griefing you yeah i think because the point is not just playing the game it's ruining the experience of the others and i think some people have pointed it out in chat when we're talking about uh role play in, in a role play context cuz there is a different context that, that needs to be appreciated between pvp griefing mm -hmm. which is usually like spawn camping someone trying to ruin yeah. their day intentionally uh, versus RP camping uh, griefing, which really has the same motivation. 
uh, you're trying to ruin someone's experience just because you either yeah. disrespect what them them or what they're doing mm-hmm. or you think it's funny. People do this. People do PvP griefing for the exact same reason. Uh, oh, yeah. Role play is the exact same motivation, but the activities are different. Um, you know, it's stuff like I think you know spamming emotes on top of people. Uh, going out into the game and spamming chat messages so that they can't read the text chat. Uh, going in there and stripping character naked and running around in the room where you know people are role playing, they're trying to be in character and all kinds of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I know for some people that they, they, they would probably ask the question, why that's even a problem. And I think for me, it likens best to a real life conversation. Is, is what you know role play they're usually yeah. talking they're acting out stuff in real life if you're standing there having a conversation with someone and someone walks up walks up stands in between the two of you and starts pelvic thrusting repeatedly <laughs> that would be pretty disrespectful i would say yeah, borderline true. harassment i mean it, yeah. it would be pretty disrespectful and if they showed up every day and did that i'm pretty sure that would be uh sexual harassment at some point <laughs> yeah um yeah that that's that's basically interrupting a private conversation mm-hmm. um, yeah. to be honest there is more likely in my opinion um there is more likely uh there's going to be more likely griefing in a pvp game if you're rping than in a pve game because at least from what I've seen, there's a lot more disrespect towards RPR from PvP communities. I agree. Than from PVE communities. It's definitely a higher it's definitely risk. Definitely been a thing. Yeah. Um, so but, I I fully expect if you start, unless unless you're in in incorporating your RP within a PvP event, yeah. Which to me is what you should do for RP because that adds that level of uh, of interaction. But unless you actually are participating in a, in a PvP activity and they are more focused on winning rather than trying to uh, to uh, make you look like a fool, they, there will be less uh, griefing done than if you're seen in the safe zone RPing where they will come and try to ruin your experience just out of lack of respect. Yeah, and I think, you know, Pocket is right that to certain ex- c- a certain extent you try to ignore griefers <clears throat> in, in an RP yeah. situation. I mean, they're going to happen. Every mm-hmm. role player knows, eventually, every MMO role player knows, eventually someone's going to come in there and do something obnoxious because they think it's funny. Usually yeah. you ignore it uh, and try to just get over it, but there are times when you can't. For instance, I remember we were doing one RP in Star Wars The Old Republic. Uh, there was an there was a emote that someone could do that, if I remember correctly, basically just shot off fireworks or something and basically filled up the entire freaking room with it. They came over to where we were doing that and repeatedly just freaking flashing crap and explosions the entire time. Yeah. Like one of the ceremony mail rewards mm-hmm. that you can get an endless amount of. Yeah, so we're sitting there like yeah. having our paying out a, a scenario and a story, and they're just going. <laughs> And we're, you know, after about three minutes of that, you're like, I can't even do anything. I'm just, I just want to strangle the shit out of you right now. I hate you with every fiber of my being. Um, Yeah, that's still something you can ignore. Hard to do. Very distracting. I find in CU, there's there's going to be things that you can't ignore that in other games, this wasn't a problem with because other games, there was clipping. You could pass through other people and get away from them but now if you're in a say an rp group and you're in a safe city and you're walking through town into buildings and someone is purposely trying Uh to get in your way start standing in front of doors and you can't get past them because you can't pass through anybody right now there's no clipping that's going to become more of a physical distraction and deterrent to our peers yeah i think I think the context for it, because what this is leading to is the question of whether or not CSE can do anything to enforce yeah. this and prevent it. And so I think the real question there comes, when does it go beyond something that is obnoxious but ignorable and goes into something that might actually violate their rules, such as falling into yeah. the category of harassment? Where is the line between I'm annoying and I'm actually actively harassing you? 
uh, it's hard to draw that line. I think in yeah. most cases that line is a verbal communication. Mm -hmm. uh, anything outside of what is already in the game, such as the clipping or using emotes yeah. or abilities, is simply unfortunate. Mm -hmm. uh, it sucks for us who want to enjoy it, and it's just unfortunate because it is a part of the game, but the verbal communication between someone being disrespectful to another player is where I think CAC is probably going to draw the line because they can't control that. Yeah, I, th I tend to agree. I think the first step is interpersonal communication. If somebody's bugging you, message them and ask them to leave. And that's what I tell other RPers to do. I mean, and it's, it's actually worked sometimes. Like someone's been super obnoxious. I've messaged them and be like, can you please not? And yeah. they've been like, lol, sorry, and run off. And I'm like, okay, whatever. It's irritating, but, you know, you're done. Um, yeah. But, you know, there are other issue times. when they, There's actually been times outside of RP where people have done it and been obnoxious like when uh yes. brand do you remember when we were trying to record the star wars the old republic guild video for our guild we the had a number our, of takes we spent hours getting our entire <laughs> guild lined up in rows and marching together and doing this stuff and some guy like runs over there and him and his buddy are like we're gonna just dance in your scene like dude to do for the for like 15 minutes and we're sitting there like we have spent hours on this <sighs> can you please leave yeah. no i think I think several people messaged this guy <laughs> privately, like, can you just please go away? And it just didn't didn't happen. Nah. We weren't RPing, but th we were trying to do something as a group, and they were disrupting. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, but so that's, yeah, that's really first. Yeah. If you so even if you do, let's let's assume they do find a way to to kind of define that. I guess. Uh, then can can they even police that? I mean. You it's send in reports case by case basis, I think. Is it? It seems almost like in many cases a report would have to record video data. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's... what is it going to tell them? Oh, he was annoying right. me, and I asked him to stop, and he didn't reply, and just kept doing it. I mean, well, then they they get yeah. what a text me a, a recording of your text message to the guy going, "Will you please stop?" And that that doesn't show anything. <laughs> well, with their their metrics that they've been talking about for using in scenarios and beta, they may have the ability to <laughs> see where a specific player is at a certain time and reference yeah. your report to, hey, I was at this location around this time, uh, and they'll be able to see your messages if you responded to them like, hey, leave, and they'll be able to see if that guy was in fact there, what abilities he used, if anything, because that's part of the metric system. Yeah. Um, and then if they want to, if they want to spend the time to cross-reference all of that to determine whether this is true or how serious it is, then to come up with some sort of consequence for it. But yeah. it's still a lot of work. And I think beyond a, a verbal communication of someone verbally harassing you, yeah. saying really uh, rude and uh, disrespectful things, then yeah. they probably yeah, won't I, have... I think verbal stuff, like text, text harassing is easy to prove because they can get the text. Right. Uh, yes. actions as Rhaegar said you know there's false reporting so actions what do they have every report come with a video that's possible it's doable but I don't know that they'd that go would be pretty th heavy uh, through the uh, exactly yeah. um, for, the, for the customer support and for the GMs now I, so, uh, I, I know like quite a lot of work some games do that uh, PUBG yeah for instance, you get the because yes. they've had such a problem with uh, hackers that now they've got like the mm -hmm. vid cam, yeah. the death cam every time it get a report. But then again, um, um, I don't remember if they uh, if they confirmed it uh, farther down the line, but they were talking about not activating collision within the realm. They talked about it because it's a universal problem, not just for role players, but for yeah. everyone. Um, for and that could be that, that could certainly just have a, a very positive byproduct for our peers and, and not yes. having to worry about that. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. And I will say I haven't really very often had a griefing problem with someone literally standing in my way, blocking me or something like that. Yes. More so than people just being obnoxious and intentionally kind of I've I've already spiteful. had it in the beta of CU running around and <laughs> yeah. someone trying no matter where I went trying to get in yeah. front of me and just stand in front of me so that I couldn't move. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Must have been Sackers. <laughs> uh, he I knew you were in there. Was. He was like, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> no. I'm gonna get you. Um then again, um with um building um uh, well player builds, I do hope that there's gonna be permissions for uh, doors and access to buildings. Mm -hmm. 
I hope so too. That, because that, I wouldn't that would want help also to well, see to Swazi good. having built this giant golden yeah. penis in front of the door as we're <laughs> exiting in our RP. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then it, as Grimslag uh, mentions also, um, you can possibly provide your own evidence for something uh, but yes. usually when you report something you can't necessarily supply that they never contact you back you never hear anything there's no follow up um, yeah. which, which is why I would say actual punishment from CSC seems unlikely except in repeated cases you know if one person is getting multiple reports about them on more than one occasion uh, then maybe you could get they could you know justify some sort of uh, action, but other than that, it's hard to see a, a developer yeah. actually stepping in on that, which is part of the major concern for our peers when there isn't a role playing server. Yeah, and it's not like they're gonna at the moment they have no intentions of having um, dev mods in game managing things. They talked about that. Um, I think on one episode with Morning with Max about uh, dev run events and mods to run these events. And he said, at the moment, we have no plans for any of that. So the the communication between mods managing things uh, will probably be more scarce than other MMOs even. So... If there, if there may be limited things that the developers can do, what other possible solutions could there be um, to help deal with the thing? You mentioned possibly uh, removing the um, the physical collision for, for within your own realm, uh, possibly removing obstacle, uh, taking action to feature doors or somehow um, prevent buildings from blocking egress. One thing I would like, I, I would like in, I think it's probably going to be a thing in the game because they've is instanced housing. Uh, they've mentioned players having housing, you know, and, and being able to have their own things in the safe cities. And I can't, it, it always comes up in MMOs where I can't see how that's feasible unless it's instance. Um, it's almost always instance. Exactly. Because yeah. otherwise it gets ugly real quick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I think instance housing is uh, is an obvious way because not, not, you don't always want to RP in somebody's house, but having the option to recluse into the into something like that, yes, um, or even perhaps some sort of instanced versions of taverns, um, something along those lines where you can uh, recluse out the server too on the tavern and people won't bug us. Well, going with that, and it won't happen, but they could do it if there was enough interest, is uh, forming some sort of group, an eight-man group, or um, I've already, it's been so long, I've forgotten the name of their their groups already. Um, whatever the name of their group is, to generate an instanced party, basically, mm -hmm. so that you can travel within maybe only the safe area as an instanced party and not be affected by um anyone else really because sure. there are they already have the separate server tech with which handles yeah. all the different elements of the game that could transition if they wanted to uh into separate servers per instance um yeah. so maybe, they can just have the transition and maybe something almost like uh rather than Rather than uh, like the automatically the moving mind. you to another server, but like move my team to another instance of the right. server. Right. Um, I don't know what kind of load that would do or anything like that, but that would I, be I, interesting. I'm not a big fan of instance like that. I'm not, but I'm, like as a special purpose thing, like we specifically want to be in our own instance for some given right. reason away from other people. Well, uh, it, can... It's more. Uh, I would be more like uh, like like they do for the um, like they're gonna do for the resources. Those bubbles that you can create like in in a specific area, um, <clears throat> like a, a player built uh, building can be in uh, in a specific bubbles. Uh, so only the people who are in the part in, in the um, in the war band or in the campaign or whatever structure you decide to go for. Um, have access to it and then there's also if, if we're talking instance uh one thing that could be interesting but i don't know uh if the tech is is there uh in in cu to do it would be if you 
put somebody on ignore list or block list, you don't see them in the game. You don't just not hear them in chat, but you don't see them in the game. That would be awesome, but I could see it being problematic for PvP, because then when you go out there, yes. you still don't ever see them. What's um, killing well, me? Unless, <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless it only affects the, the safe zones. The same faction. The, yeah. uh, the safe yeah. areas. Yeah, um, or the same faction. I'm sorry, but if you're a dick to everybody in your realm, and everybody ignores you, and you, you get into a PvP zone, and you're being wrecked by the other faction, and everybody, nobody sees you getting killed again and again and again. <laughs> That's your fault for being a dick. <laughs> Be back, bitch. Yeah, I think anything they do for instancing has to happen in the safe zone or the safe yes. city. Yeah, uh, yeah. It just can't happen. Yeah. And, and, and I'm looking back at, like, SWOTOR instancing as oh, the God. extreme anger. Yeah, well, everything that, was so was, instancing. <laughs> Everything was super instance. You couldn't find any place to RP yeah. properly because it was closed off to either a race or a class um, or a quest yeah. itself. I spent um, so much time in that game trying to find RP locations so just to go, I, I remember this yeah. cool thing, and it's instant. And it's locked. Can't yeah. get there anymore. I already did it. So I don't want that level of instancing. No, I, just, definitely I think it'd be cool to have an optional instancing within safe areas for a group, mm -hmm. specifically a group, um, because what uh, Calumut mentioned, assassinations, uh, getting a little yeah. abused, uh, wouldn't matter if it's all in safe zones, so. Yeah. Yeah, one thing I did wonder about is, uh, kind of wondering if there's any way that the bounty system could be utilized to allow some level of self-policing from the community. It certainly could, yeah, I think it could take off, whether or not... The, pro the problem is... It can be abused so much Certainly, if you yeah. can put a bounty on the same uh, okay. yeah, on be somebody of your same faction. It would be abused so much. It would be a griefing tool rather than a policing well, tool, I think. Now, for our community, that's more of a problem because of our own rules about faction yeah. play. But for other people who have characters or if they want to spend the extra money for a second account to have a character in a different faction, they can then yeah. put a bounty out or if they have friends in other factions, put a bounty out yeah. and have a person from the other yeah. faction True. do that. Well, that's why I was thinking not so much the way we conceptualize the bounty system now, as in you pay for someone and someone else kills them, but more so the, the basic architecture of it, where you can somehow put something up for other players to see and interact with and, and do and perhaps get rewards for or whatever. If there was some way to use that basic, uh, that type of coding that already exists in the game for maybe a mm -hmm. slightly different purpose to somehow enable some form of self-policing amongst the community, uh, which doesn't even yeah. necessarily have to be just griefers for RP, but also basically a way to identify just, uh... these are the people in the community <laughs> that are pissing us all off. Um, right. Yeah. But I can't. I could. I, think, I couldn't think of any way to actually do that and have the community able to punish someone for it without it being a abusable. Um, right. <laughs> That's always the problem. Mm -hmm. Any tool, any tool to police the community can be abusable and can be used in reverse as a tool for griefing. Yeah. And, and I think any kind of report <laughs> system still needs to have some sort of investigation, regardless. Yeah. So whether people abuse it or not, it yeah. still has to undergo a dev investigation to see whether or not it's just people being ignorant and just for the sake of saying, oh, everyone hates this guy, so I'm going to hate him to report, yeah. or whether yeah. or not these reports have any kind of substance to them. However, I do like Grimslug's ID. I do. The problem, I think, with something like that usually comes down to who approves who goes on the list. <laughs> we do. I, I, we do. Something I, well, I mean, you can like do that, that within like your guild. You can go, okay, it's, no one in my guild yeah, is going to yeah. trade with this guy, but you know, <laughs> yeah. but then they can and just go somewhere no else. No one in I my mean. alliance trades with this guy. It becomes a reputation thing, Quite not, possible. A tool, yeah. not a tool uh, given by CSE, <laughs> um, but a uh, community driven community, reputation. Yeah. And that's a lot less abusable because it also falls can, in line with their intent to bring community back yes in, into, into each game. faction yeah like uh you could have a maybe not a csc firm because it might be against us but uh a special uh either a special a bulletin board in each city saying this one is an asshole this one is an asshole don't sell to this one 
uh, this one is a scammer, wh whatever. And then it's the choice of each vendor. They should just tie it into it. Realm Rewards. Yes, I would love that. <laughs> that, that would be interesting, yeah. You've but been an ass to your fellow Arthurian friends, whatever. Less, less Negative Realm points rewards. for you. Less yeah. Realm Rewards. You've been reported X amount of times. You've but been red flagged it's... on the market. <laughs> You've all these other things. Yeah. The the problem is again, it's it's a CSC based yeah. tool, and that's abusable, unless it it has a human element oversight. But that requires a lot of work. So I I'd rather yeah. have a community. There's ways driven. still to do that though. Any CSC mm -hmm. tool, if you have a like, if it takes into fa a factor multiple names or multiple accounts communications mm -hmm. towards reporting this person say yeah. 50 different accounts yeah have reported this and not just like random new accounts account accounts yeah but like active, active established accounts. accounts active accounts 50 different accounts have reported yeah. this one person there's probably some merit yeah. into investigating this yeah a tr putting a uh reasonable tre threshold to actually flagging somebody would be uh would be good now i did have two other ideas um that pop that it could possibly do uh one what again goes back to taverns a lot of rp happens in mm -hmm. taverns or player yes. owned structures or things or things that players pretend to own all rp um, starts in well, a tavern they have taverns, they have yeah. suggested <laughs> are going to be player owned. they have suggested that players will own taverns uh, so one thing no, I no, it's not suggested it was a Kickstarter um, pledge. Well, it's not in the game yet. So, no. <laughs> um, players are supposed to be able to own taverns. Mm -hmm. So one thing is, I do wonder: will players have any control over the tavern? Will it be instanced? For instance, uh, so like if it was instanced, could player could the player who owns the tavern kick somebody out? Hopefully, yes. Could they ban someone from their tavern? That's what I'm saying. Because that could yes. that wouldn't solve the problem, and but that could certainly help. Because then a, a role see. player can own their own tavern and go, "Hey, this is my tavern." And someone comes in, they do stuff they don't like, and they go, "Well, get out of my tavern. It's my tavern. Screw you." Yeah, that, I see that as being uh, one form of a a personal player house. Mm -hmm. In which case, you can certainly limit yeah. who goes in and who goes out of course um i also see it as b kind of like a almost like a market stall for that player source of income uh -huh. intent yeah. like with the intent of them having their own revenue in but the game that, to, that to fill in the market that discourages the owner from banning left, left yeah. and right for what whatever reason but right. if you're if you're actually and that's that's that would be tied tied into the uh player policing the community whoever is banned from the the tavern gets on to a poster at the entrance of the tavern and saying this guy is banned this guy is banned for whatever reason you can put the reason also on that and it alerts other players that pass by that tavern that this guy is to be looked for, looked at and that you should be wary of him maybe not trade with him or whatever i think at the very least it, if if the taverns are instanced, because we don't know that, um, no. but if they were instanced and they're player owned, I do think it would be good. It, it's kind of like like Bram mentioned, a lot of player instance player housing. You can okay who can and can't come in. Kind of the yeah. reverse of that. Everybody can come in, but I can specifically kick out and ban people yeah. who act out in my establishment um, mm -hmm. and kick them out. As Calumet Calumet mentioned. Um, it might even be feasible if there's a player, if there's like a guild owned city to ban people within your uh, realms, within your own faction or, or mm -hmm. players to even go, okay, we don't want this. Th we don't like this guild. They're all asses. We don't want them in our freaking player city. So we kick, mm -hmm. so we flag them all out yeah. so that not necessarily they can't go in. Uh, I think that's a little bit harder they're because it's PVP. You KOS want them to be able to go in. Fine. Um, they're, so I do think KOS there's to our NPC guards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You could possibly do that. Um, I think there's possibly PVP issues there, so I don't know if they would want to, but Hey, if well, you decide no. that another major guild can't help defend your keep, that's kind of your problem. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you come to yeah. need them. Um, yeah. However, at some, something on that scale might be abusable by the realm, because then if like several major guilds decided to pick on one guild, they could be like, you can't come to any of our keeps, and then... 
<laughs> well, that's the game. That's also the game. It's true. Um, yeah. That's I, I. I wouldn't have a problem with that. At they, that point, it's just like, fine. When your keep starts going down, we're not gonna protect yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's a double-edged sword. Yeah, you can ban a, a guild from from your keep, but then they won't come to help you. They won't trade with you. Uh, it's it becomes a choice Drama. matter. No, Game of cho <laughs> choices, choices matter. Yeah. Um, you decide to ban a guild, you know you, there will be consequences. The other idea I had is kind of along the lines Oldovic is mentioning for public and private RP areas, um, mm -hmm. which is we know that they're incorporating Discord as their text and yes. voice chat system and every, as their text chat system mm -hmm. for the game. Um, mm -hmm. So one thing that I thought is uh, if you if a player could create their own text chats and actually own and to some degree moderate those channels, that can be an area because then mm -hmm. you can create, OK, here's my guild role play channel yeah. or my cross guild or my alliance role play channel, whatever. Mm -hmm. And if someone acts out in there, you can actually kick them out uh, of the text yeah. channel. I agree, Rhaegar. I mean, there's not a system. There isn't a system that can't yeah. be abused in some way. Um, yes. Some some are more easily abusable than others. That, that's I mean, why even in our the, uh, traditional MMOs, yeah, systems that exist, they're, they're being abused every day. Even WoW, MMO, right now, RP and WoW is there's still things being abused, and it. it's it's hard to get rid of everything. But so. Unless anybody's got anything crazy to throw out for that, I think we've about beaten that to death. Uh, and so let's just one other ahead. thing. Go ahead. Uh, not not about that, but uh, unless you're still going in the options of other things that we can. I was going to switch to other features for RP. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. go for it. All right, um, just thought I'd switch for the last part of this. Just a general role player support features that don't require an RP server. Um, we've, we've already talked about some of these different things. Like we've talked about, um, character profiles that someone could click on your character and, and no, read a description and what I was profile and stuff. <laughs> uh, we, we've kind of talked about those a little bit. Uh, one other thing I had thought of is dice rollers. Um, uh, not everyone in MMORPs use dice, but some people do. And it's generally pretty easy to incorporate a dice roller into the chat. The only problem is is that in a lot of games it it almost immediately funnels right into in-game gambling yeah <laughs> with in-game resources oh yeah definitely uh well for that you just because they're you can mod the ui they do intend for there to be a, a ui mod system yeah. of some sort in which case you're looking maybe at uh lua scripting or some other form of scripting mm -hmm. um in which case all you're doing is creating a script to create a random number with a dice roll uh, and apply it to what you're doing. Yes, you can use that to then gamble, but that's actually a cool thing. Um, I think it is, but some some <laughs> game developers start go freaking out when that starts happening. Oh, I remember in Guild they, Wars One, they took all they, the dice rolling away because they didn't want people to be able to weird do it. Because in, in EverQuest, a dice roll was actually the way to distribute loot. <laughs> but since there's not going to be any. Uh, <laughs> loot boss loot and anything um i don't see why the problem would be with uh with the dice roll system yeah i think uh, the, i think the problem becomes the fear that they're going to get into the media as people saying that people use the game to gamble and all kinds of crap which in the u.s is illegal in most states um well if it's in the game with a uh, virtual currency that has no real value yeah if if i have 10 gold coin established by the programming script of the game because i've earned 10 gold coin and i roll a script that says if i don't roll an eight on a 1d8 then i lose all my money like, that's just me being stupid um someone else gets yeah. my 10 gold uh, and, and it, it's not something uh since the problem is uh for gambling that in a lot of those games are free to play games where you buy for real money uh in-game currencies for a CU where you can't do that, it's yeah. it's not as uh, a, problematic legally, I think. A dice script is purely a, a communication device for one player to pseudo agree to another player. If I don't roll this number or whatever the terms are, I will open up a trade 
communication with window with you and give you my gold and at some point someone's going to be like yeah i'm just kidding i'm not going to do that yeah and <laughs> and they, they don't and, and they don't need they don't even need to do that go that far when it comes to role players all they need is the dice option <laughs> um, yeah right and and because dice do get used in mmorp quite a bit um yes, i do. i don't generally For... use them but uh, especially for combat which yeah. is important because so far mark jacobs is on record to saying dueling is not in the game yeah in which case our peers need some other avenue to unless yeah. you go to the arena combat unless you go to the arena yeah uh, which traditional is, dueling is does not, in the game. not work yeah. terribly well with role play i mean sure they could all oh, the role players could go okay Dueling is illegal everywhere except the arena. We just made that up. And so if you want to fight between your characters, you must go showdown style and walk <laughs> all the way to the arena to go do it. Because otherwise you will yeah. be arrested. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it is what it is. But yeah. for, for a game to say we have no intent for players to open up a dueling type mm -hmm. inter, uh, interactive with each other, yeah for our peers you need some other form of that and dice are traditionally used to solve things uh for yeah. dueling especially because dueling is very non-rp skill oriented i i might duel chris and maybe chris is extremely better than me in pvp just naturally he doesn't even know it because <laughs> he's usually focused on crafting but maybe he's just a genius <laughs> naturally and he's Probably suddenly not. like beating me but in the, in our role play story i'm like here and he's like here how yeah. do you navigate uh, the difference yeah. in skill when there's skill outside of the rp and that's where dice usually tend to come in yeah i mean you could you can write so, it out without dice right. or anything you could just write it out but some people do like the the randomness that dice offer so that's that's something that's that's kind of feasible and nice to have uh, we've also discussed having mods or volunteers of some sort run live mm -hmm. in-game events or perhaps occasion sometimes having really well scripted automated in-game events um those do if they exist sometimes they're very repetitive but you know <laughs> uh, unfortunately at the moment the cu devs have no intention of playing that role so hopefully they open it up to players to be able to to do that yeah i would love though uh since it is a stretch goal uh, with the a lot of emotes for role players, which we got. It's, it's, yeah, <laughs> since we were talking, they're talking in chat about uh, bar fights. I would love bar fight emotes, where just like in TF2, <laughs> if one character emotes and the other one just in front of you emotes a uh, an interactive emote, those two combine to actually do a separate emote. Uh, like for example. Uh, in TF2, if one character raises his hand and the other one in front of you does the same, you high five. <laughs> that is pretty so, awesome. And you're totally yeah. kind of marching into my final question of the day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's why I was laughing. I was like, damn it. <laughs> What's the question? <laughs> well, it was, it was a softball. I was going to roll off. On. Okay. Um, so you can think of another one for that. <laughs> that is cool though. I, I hadn't seen that uh, before in TF. Oh yeah, in TF2 you um, do that a lot. One thing that I I'm kind of big into that no one else seems particularly thrilled about is the idea of uh, using virtual reality within the safe zones or inst how instance housing or something. Uh, yeah, I still think that's really pretty. That's a pretty cool possibility that not a whole lot of other people have jumped up and down for. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. I'd like it. I'd like to. I want to try it just because uh my problem with that would be that the safe zones in cu would turn into vr chat what's wrong with that as <laughs> always you can't upload an icon and turn yourself into sonic uh, ugly sonic the hedgehog <laughs> Uganda, <laughs> whatever the i mean i'm sitting here way. typing in my own yeah. rp group chat on discord by the way we're still rping this weekend and i get a <laughs> message just so you know felix says just so you know, received and acknowledged through VR or something like that. Like, I, ha I had my headset on <laughs> using my desktop, and I got the message, and I went and clicked on it, and I was like, this is received in VR. Ha, 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 ha.
I, I am um, the tiebreaker. I like VR. I I have never tried VR. <laughs> I would like to like VR. Yeah. For me, it's not that I don't like VR. It's that for me right now, it's too gimmicky. Yeah. It's it's too. Um, uh, we talked. Uh, Pocket Lint talks about uh, valley drunk in in VR in the bar. When you're uh, doing stuff in VR, you feel drunk all the time. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> because no, no. Uh, when you look at somebody playing in VR, it looks like they're drunk all the time. You are. It's like an approximation oh, yeah, yeah. when you grab something, and it always moves separately than your hand. It like it's like it's jiggling in your hand yeah. when you move something. It's just it's approximation. It looks weird. You've been watching some gimmicky. crappy VR compared to mine because <laughs> mine works pretty. Well. I, I was I, amazed. I, I was sitting I've, here doing the controllers, going like, "This is so amazing." I've it's doing exactly what I tell it to. You. I've watched people playing Fallout 4 VR, and it looked like crap, in my opinion. Fallout 4, it, I, watching them, I'm sure, it looks like crap, but being in it and actually being in, in it is pretty I, cool. I, it yeah, is maybe. not nearly as good as the real game. Anyway, yeah. we're kind of digressing, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the point VR. is, I, but, I agree. I think I'd like to see some VR in safe zone territories for roleplay immersiveness, yeah. which I think was the point of that. And I kind of I, I agree with Rhaegar. Um, as long as it's not taking a lot of dev- programmer hours, the only reason I ever mention it is because they've said they're working, they want to work on yes. it for Cube already. And mm-hmm. so I'm like, well, then how hard is it to port it to like the safe zone? Like, <laughs> is that would that take mm-hmm. not much more time? Because if it doesn't, then why not? Um, yeah. Uh, we've talked about having the importance of lore based NPCs and and locations mm-hmm. with their own with their own story plots. Um, uh, that kind of stuff is nice. Name, location driven stories like that actually happened. Uh, even if you weren't involved with it, um, you could see a story about how we'll use Arthurians because that's what we are. Um, how yeah. a group of Arthurians overtook a group of Vikings at a certain location that exists in the world as part of the growing meta of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and going with that is something we ha- we don't usually talk about these a whole lot before we do the show, but one thing we have talked about is the Tome of Knowledge from Warhammer Online. Yes. Uh, for those mm-hmm. that aren't familiar with that, Warhammer Online basically had an interactive uh, wiki for all the game's lore and items and stuff in the game itself. So you could like just open a tab while you were in the MMO, and it had pages of location and race lore and all this stuff. It was really handy um, for role players, but I think it also had tons of other like game information and stuff that was really <laughs> useful for people. Uh, it was um, yeah. with the safe Pretty cities. Awesome. I, w- I would like it to be not a tome of knowledge, but a library, an actual library where you would go and you would have the books. That would be cool. like a book That'd on the Arthurians, uh, on the Arthurians, a book on each race with all the becoming stories in the game that you yeah, could open. You see, as, as much as I love the board game kind of idea that, that mm-hmm. they're making, uh, the Depths board game, which I've mm-hmm. been very yeah, strong in order of yeah. and played, um, I do kind of wish that they would have their writer, Max, start focusing mm-hmm. on writing yes. as, much as, as much as his development of the board game so that they can make something like that. That they can yeah. spend all these yeah. hours advancing their current lore just for the sake of yeah. advancing it to put in a library somewhere for yeah. visual aesthetic. Yeah, I do admit that sometimes it seems like not a lot of right. Like they have him doing other too many other things, and not a lot of yeah. writing actually gets done. I know. I think yeah. he's also like their office manager or something too. Uh, in addition uh, to being the writer, Tyler's office manager. Oh, I thought he. Yeah. I thought for a while he was doing the office manager stuff or something. He's okay. the stream runner. Well, yeah. he became that when the community manager yeah. was gone. Yeah. But um, <laughs> anyway, it 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 does like we we've had Q and A's with him sometimes, and I'm like, mm-hmm. so what are the, how many stories are there that are done but not really out? And it never seemed like there were many of them. So I'm like, yeah. it's so always one at a time. Yeah, what do they have you writing? I mean, <laughs> like nothing at the moment. And, I think. and I've asked questions, like just theoretical questions yeah. to him. I was thinking. Um, like going back to the Enchanted Knight origin story mm-hmm. about how Arthur's friend M- Mew, Mew, I think it's Mew, yeah. 
became the Enchanted Knight through basically this metamorphosis mm -hmm. state. So I messaged Max and I was like, does that mean all Enchanted Knights go through this like egg transformation? He's like, good question. You'll have to ask Mark because Mark wrote that. So Mark has wrote most of this lore yeah. at the moment. Yeah. yeah, I mean, don't and... get me wrong, Grimslag. I love Max, and <laughs> I'm not necessarily saying he's not doing a good job. I'm saying it more. No, it just seems they like they're let not him... letting him write stuff. Like they're not having yeah. him sit down yeah, and, and write Max. stuff. I don't know. It's weird. We um, oh yeah, Max. Max is amazing, but because we don't see tons he's, of lore and writing writer. and stuff coming out. Yeah, he's a writer. Let him write some more lore. Yeah, I mean, and That's obviously not take away from developing and getting to beta. He's not contributing right now him writing lore is not going to make beta come slower or faster yeah it's completely separate yeah i was gonna say obviously we don't know why there's not more stories and yes. stuff coming out we just know that there's not and i it's definitely been noticeable like as, even as they were coming out with all the they were having delays and everything i've been looking at going shouldn't there be more art coming out and more yeah. writing. I mean, the game's like delayed a year and a half. Where's all the all the all the? I mean, what are what, what are the artists doing yeah. in that time? I assume they're putting out more art because yeah, they're well, not they're, programming they're on and, <laughs> and things like that, I think um, for a lot of things. Well, they have been Michelle, recently. Michelle but is doing um, well, Michelle was always doing the concept arts, but the the, all, the writing has always seemed the most pronounced yeah. one of of that. It's yes. like, well, where's the writing at? Um, yeah. I don't know, so and he may he may idea. have a he may very well have a huge tome of stuff that he has not revealed. I, I don't so. know, or they're just because, making him yeah. do lots of other stuff. I have no idea. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm with Odelvik. I'm I'm with Odelvik there. Where's the name? What, of is, the what is the name of the crafter classes? Yeah, <laughs> crafter. Uh, anyway, I I do hope that they start focusing a lot more on writing because I think that's one of yes. the best ways to support role play is to have yeah. a world to utilize for creating characters and for actually interacting yeah. with the world because I remember right. when uh, some people in our community were trying to start a guild uh, with Final Fantasy Realm Reborn when that was first mm -hmm. coming out yeah. they changed the entire story and kept all the details to themselves until the game came out and no one really kind of knew how yeah. to at that point create a role play situation within it and, because and they held all the all the keys not just that but to be honest they ask who wants a role play server how many role players are in the community if you don't have a lore to support the role players the role players are not going to come out That's and true. say i want to role play because you don't know anything about well not anything but if you, you build know it they will come yeah <laughs> it is it's, it's very true uh if you don't have a strong lore a well-developed one right now we have the becoming stories for the classes we have some sort of backgrounds for the different classes. What are the Sturm? But no, they're mysterious. Yeah. They're, they're intentionally not being talked about for reasons. Yes, but... I'm sorry, but that you bugs should me. Have, <laughs> yeah. They're mysterious. It's, uh, yeah, I, I, would, I, I'm, I totally disagree with uh, keeping the lore of a race that you have announced and that you have started concept art that is even in the in the i i, I think that. they're holding off on it because it integrates with a game mechanic regarding dragons of some sort Maybe. um so i feel like they, uh, should, they could at least put out something kind of vague and uh yes yeah it gives you an idea of what's going on there should be more role play uh, yes. Because that's the problem. Well, that's the problem we've had talking to. We've got a lot of guild members in our own community mm -hmm. who might do some occasional role playing stuff. Maybe they don't want to focus on it, but they'll do mm -hmm. some occasionally and everything. And then when we talk about characters, they go, "We don't really know that much about the classes or the races, yes. and it's hard to pick what I want to do because exactly. I may change my mind when they come out with more stuff." And yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're like, not okay. asking them to yeah. give us it's, all the details. You're not of wrong. All the classes that are going to be there. <laughs> The, uh, the origin stories are great, but they really need to start putting some more stuff out. What yes. is the name of the world our characters live on? <laughs> yeah, even that. I don't even think they know. Like, not the developers, but the people in the world. I don't think they have a name for their world. Well, they have. It's, it's impossible it's that they don't. It's at least world. the world. <laughs> <laughs> we, we named our planet Earth. I know, I know. Nobody told us it was called Earth. The people in there named it. 
I'm but by sure. that regard, because of the islands separating, I'm sure each faction yes, they, have their own name. For, yeah. yeah, each faction might have their own name for the world. Yeah, uh, but to answer, made... sorry. No, yeah, go ahead. To answer Oldovic's question, um, not all of them. Uh, I do think a lot of our peers will pick the same server because guilds and groups like my guild will absolutely go we want to do rp not all of us but there's a group of us that want to do rp we're going to try to get some other people who want to do rp to go to this server and do that arthurian side any other in our peers that want to join us you know yeah. come along and we will we will do stuff we will run a, we've got some people that'll run some events and everything and hopefully we can organize it but some people may yeah. go we don't like those guys and they may go to their own <laughs> server um yeah. Uh, alternatively, as we talked about much earlier in the stream, uh, Chris brought up PvP and RP. Some people, some RPers, hate PvP with mm -hmm. a passion, and some RPers actually very much like the combination of the two, where some PvPers hate RP with a passion. I agree. I'm a combination of the two kind of guy. Yeah, I like so, both. Um, and so you'll see a lot of division, and we saw this in SWOTOR too, a dedicated RP server. And then PvP RP servers where the and there's a, a a maturity level that changes between the two types of servers as well at times. So there's just divisions everywhere when it comes to RP for various reasons. I definitely agree that not having an RP server does fragment the the overall RP or community RP a community, little bit yeah. uh, more than having an RP community at RP server. I think the the converse of that is if you have an RP server, most of the RPers will go to that server and you won't you'll have a hard time getting any kind of a strong roleplay community on a PvP server. Yes. Whereas if you don't have an official RP server, you should have at least one PvP server that most of that a fair number of the RPers yeah. congregate that is an, on. An, an official uh RP server. And um Ulvik, the fact that um we can't communicate with the other factions means that for the most part well, even when you can communicate, your RP is internally uh, centered. You don't care, and it's the same in life. You don't care what the other faction thinks or does. Your action depends on your own interaction. When you go to war with another country, you don't give a shit what the other country does or says. At least not the grunts. Yeah, I will say the, the only benefit... Uh, therein is you can do battles that you organize outside of the game. Yes. You know, we can go, hey, your your yeah. guild get, go to this field, we'll go to this field, and yes. we'll have a battle as like an mm -hmm. RP thing. Uh, you can totally organize that through Discord yes. or something. So that's that's doable, and that that can be interesting and fun. Yeah, um, can be. I think it, it can be very pleasing to role players as a, a larger whole and yeah. say a guild of role players to have a nemesis guild uh, yes. within another faction who they can now integrate within story because that's entirely what it's about is story. Yeah. Well, you remember, I think it, in SW Tour when we had that um, that interfaction PvP, RP PvP event at one point where yeah. all three factions were competing open world and these Two factions. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Both factions. Uh, we're competing <laughs> open world. I was thinking about CU. In you know these these like three different locations, uh, and there was kind of a story, a little bit of a kind of a story, and not scripted, but they had they mm -hmm. pre-planned how this was supposed to work out, and it didn't end up working very well organizationally, and some people cheesed yeah. it, but that was a kind of a fun way that we were able to organize outside of the game yeah. to then do some PvP with a little bit of a story idea to it and, you know, kind of merge the two worlds a little bit. Even though some people cheated. But that's besides the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nemesis. Yeah, if they can just have Nemesis guilds as a thing, regardless whether you're on an RP server, but that, that way our fun. peers can utilize it. That'd be cool, yeah. Uh, I'm a very strong proponent in all regards of gaming, whether it's PvP or RP, that developers oftentimes have to make the things to give people the chance to do them yeah. because people are lazy inherent inherently <laughs> yes. don't like to put the effort into doing it so sometimes developers have to go the extra mile to create the world yeah. for these people to interact with whether it's with these different systems that's why i'm always about pvp 
need some motivation from the developers to funnel them into areas. It's not just about, well, if you like to PvP, then you'll PvP. And if you like yeah. to RP, then you'll RP. Sometimes they have to build the foundation for you to even get started yeah. because you don't want to do that yourself. Yeah. But maybe that can be um, even like a that can be a, a realm renowned thing that even yes. rewards in on itself. Like you get a certain amount of renown as a guild, you can then identify a nemesis guild at the other of the other faction, and then your members killing those members gives you additional renown yeah, for your guild. Absolutely. Well, th um, there's one feature I like a lot in another game uh, in development called Pantheon, with where. Um, they don't have quests. Uh, they have an instinct system uh, where you you kind of, for example, hear a woman crying. You have the choice to go or not go, talk to her, see what the problem is. And that's something that is activated. You can decide to be a Tom Keeper or not. You can just go grind and level by grinding mobs. Or you can start doing quests, and then you learn more of the lore of the world and of the people inhabiting it. Uh, that would be interesting to have a different set of rewards that are not something that everybody will want to have, uh, will feel like they have to become our peers to get their min-max, but a different kind of realm reward for being a lore keeper, basically. Now, we all know what the most important Roleplay support feature is the roleplay server. <laughs> Functional chairs that I can oh, click yes. on yeah. and sit in. <laughs> no, no, not even that. I, I could, as much as I want them, I just want to be able to see someone walk by me without glitching. Oh, that's true. Okay, yes. uh, yeah, that was so yes. bad in tour. You just walk in, it's like D -d 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 one, it, one it, thing. D -d 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 <laughs> One thing that is great in also it's true. In, Slash uh, Black, is more Black Desert is that if you are you're back against the wall and you press your back key, you lean against the wall. I actually didn't know that word. Uh, <laughs> that uh, yeah, your, your character <laughs> actually leans against the wall. If you are next to something that is uh, chair level, if you press your back key, so your S key with your when your back is in it, you sit on it. Something like that that can let you interact with obstacles, uh, like leaning against a, a, a wall. In video, it has also a game, uh, a game mechanic because you can eavesdrop on people by doing that. Uh, but it's it's some features like that that are um, world interacting emotes, not just your character doing something with the environment around him, but actually interacting with the environment. Yeah, one of the my last question I had, which was the softball I mentioned earlier, was we know we've got this the 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 fu funding goal to get the emotes. So, yeah. what I what are some emotes you really want to see in the game um, coming out of that? One of mine was slash lean. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, they had that in like City of Heroes. It was fantastic. You could lean on like anything. You could sit on rails and stuff. I mean, you you could like do like yeah. just about anything you wanted to, positional wise. It was pretty awesome. Uh, I would like to see combat emotes like very generic, like slash punch, and your character throws a punch. Yeah, I that, that comes. Came in, that, guess, comes but... into, <laughs> that comes. That comes into that would be uh, nice, what, yeah. what I said about interactive emotes. You start emoting, and somebody comes around and emotes something that has an interactive component component with the emote you're, you're doing, and then they combine and start syncing. Just like, for example, in Sea of Thieves, if you start playing an instrument, and somebody comes around and whips out their own instrument and starts playing, those two get in tune, and both instruments start playing the same song in tune, not just desynced. So that's something that would be great for RP. Like if you if you have we know we talked about a bit having instrument and music. If you could do that, uh, and being able to sync your instrument and playing the same song in tune, that would be great. Hey, interactive emotes slash hug, and then the other person does slash hug, and you yeah. actually hug. You actually hug. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, for me, uh, a big one was also collapse, a and a an emote that will make you fall down and lay down because we we talked about the RP battles and, yeah. and, and people fighting in RP and there's never a good way to fall down when you die, never. Yeah. <laughs> you're just like and you like, lay down and then you're like let me down, and uh, lay down a bit and... uh, hey baby i'm <laughs> unconscious what's up <laughs> uh i i think just a variety of everything typically mm -hmm. we see you know some there might be three or four distinctions between some of them mm -hmm. but that's about it i think a large library of emotes yes. uh, going back to the music playing bards especially who play music literally in the game for their abilities that's... should have a library worth of music to just pick from mm -hmm. being able to write their own music that uh, <laughs> we've been talking about abuse a lot in this stream. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i know <laughs> I this is not emotes, but I agree with Pocket about a longer chat message instead of 150 characters. Um, yeah, that Twitter is a problem in some worth. games. The, the <laughs> yeah. chat length is way too short. Um, that's what mod, where mods come in because that's what they do for WoW. Then, yeah, WoW instant messenger. Screw this business. I, just realistic emotes too. Like a lot of emotes are very cartoony. Uh, full of <laughs> flair and mm -hmm. and a cartoon-esque yeah. and they're trying to be visually flamboyant <laughs> um yeah but yeah. just to have a just yeah. a, a, a more yeah. subtle exactly that yeah. just a more subtle nature to them more realistic just pay a guy to come out and just be like how would you react mm -hmm. if you were excited and he was like yeah you know yeah just, yeah just like simple i could be i would be okay with that yeah like, like someone just bought you a hamburger excited, not you just mysteriously were given a Ferrari yeah. excited. Right. <laughs> yeah. Tone Definitely. it down a little bit. Not 11, <laughs> more like a 7. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Dances also. Um, Quite I, a few dances, actually. Medieval style. Not just the, uh, the usual moonwalk and... Uh, and uh, Gangnam style and things like that that have no place in... Yeah. They're trying to make realistic armors for a medieval world. Do medieval uh, dances. I actually super agree with that. I hadn't actually given it much thought, but it is something that bugs me when I get in a game and I want to do like slash dance and I'm like walking around and full plate and then all of a sudden I'm like... Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. <laughs> Totally going to do like uh, weird Napoleon Dynamite dance. I don't know. And I'm like, <laughs> it's funny the first yeah. couple of times after a while. I'm like, mm. now that, I would, wonder... that could come into also interactive emotes. A lot of the medieval dance are couple dances. So, yeah, that could be. I, I, Might no, be a I, bit complex, with, I don't know. <laughs> with their animation system being set up in a way where they animate one arm or one yeah, arm or upper exactly. torso piece by piece and then putting them together yeah. if someone will somehow be able to with mods interact with that system and create their own emotes that are just that so awesome. ridiculous that it's ridiculous <laughs> well i suspect plate wearers are gonna sink in water yes <laughs> I mean, plate wears, when they're, like, super heavy, I just see them, like, putting their feet out one at a time. Uh, uh. You can't do much more when you're wearing 300 pounds of metal yes. on you. <laughs> you can clip that all you want, Zarfei. The, the screen doesn't capture much. <laughs> just my face. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. We're, we already have Andrew for the dancing. <laughs> and Tyler. Only Sarah has to put up with the full extent of my dancing. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes me. Yes, sometimes on rare occasions. <laughs> I only have to put up with the the singing, not the dancing. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I agree with the salutes. Uh, having different, having some useful and, and good salutes and things are important. Yes. Um, just gestures in general, you know, the wave, hey, come here, sort of thing. You don't yeah. really have to go. <laughs> yeah, come, yeah. come. <laughs> It, to, to be fair, Pocket, you can't swim at all in sea, so yes. <laughs> armor or not. <laughs> yeah. Well, not at present. Not at present. Um, Facial emotes? That, that Very... I, I don't know. 
ha do they tough. have an animated face? Because we know they can animate different parts of the body, but I don't think they can animate the face. I say it's no, tough they, because they a can't. lot of games have tried to do facial emotes and they look real bad. They look, they look really weird. Black Desert has those, and that it. game normally looks really nice, the, the, but their the facial smile. emotes are so bad. The smile in Black Desert is it's so crazy. creepy. The reason it's like, why most games don't is because the face has so many muscles and yes. positions in it that uh, low poly models can't emulate, mm -hmm. uh, so they really can't script something yeah. as complex as the face with as few polys as they put in yeah. their models. It requires a lot of a lot of vertexes to be able mm -hmm. to shape the curl yeah. of a lip or whatever. I, I wouldn't honestly. I so. wouldn't want them to bother with that. That would be a, a cool feature, but now maybe add this as an extender pack. They can, however instead of doing an animation of it, do a separate model with a texture that has now a smiling face or a snarl face on it that mm -hmm. just switches Swaps. back and forth. Yeah. It's it's very abrupt, but mm -hmm. it's yeah, a way I, to fake it. I know yeah. Black Desert has some pretty good character creation stuff, but mm -hmm. you go in there and try to do some of the smile stuff, you turn that off fast. Oh, You're like, nope, oh. nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it's insane. It goes it's just like super so uncanny valley really quick. <laughs> it's like psychopath smile, basically. It's also hard to see the face when your camera zoomed out yes. to see the entire area you're yep. in, but yeah, that too. Um, anyway, I th I do think there's a lot they could do with emotes that are really cool and helpful. Yeah, uh, a lot of stuff's unessential. Uh, it really comes yeah. down RP wise for just luxury sort of features that help with RP. Uh, you need to be able to, you need as much as people worry about like ERP for some reason, you really do need to be able to lay down. Uh, collapsing abruptly is very mm -hmm. nice because again, you yes. people die in RP all the time and being able to lay down and walking and is nice. Walking is critical. Sitting in yes. chairs is very important. Do not make me lay down, uh, lay back and spread my legs like some kind of weird porn star. <laughs> star Wars, Wars the Old Republic, hate, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> I hate the emotes that randomly spawn this absurd looking chair oh, underneath yeah. you. It's That's not a good solution. <laughs> it it's is hard. not a good solution. As, as a crafter, because we didn't talk about that. Can we craft but... chairs? <laughs> No, no, that no. would be okay. I would be okay yes. with that. You can yes. craft chairs and just just that. split. Being split, able to craft sit. campfires, tents, sleeping bags, anything that is that has no stats but could be used as yeah. RP support. They, they could put all those props and stuff in the game and as, yeah. a, as a gold sink and just have it be purchasable yeah, from a vendor. Okay. I don't, I'm mm -hmm. cool with that. I will, yeah. I will I'll buy, buy stuff from my house. When I do my slash <laughs> set. It uses that chair, and I sit on it somewhere. Yeah. It's in my bag. It exists. Bag of holding. <laughs> you just pull it out of your ass whenever you do the emote. Flop! That's it, yep. It's a, it's a folding the camp fold, chair. Oh, hey, the, folding, the, the folding camp chair. <laughs> Magic. This yeah. To everything. Yeah, Pocket, it, it bugs me when games decide we're just going to completely le leave out a lay down emote because we don't want people doing sexy times. I'm like, first <laughs> of all, if P our peers want to do that, they don't need to lay down to do it. <laughs> and people know what the hell they're doing either way. Uh, <laughs> so just give us the freaking lay down emote so that people can use it properly. And if other people want to use it in some other method, <laughs> let them. Who cares? Yeah. Abuse. Yes. Hard to get <laughs> Let rid of. Let them it. abuse each other with their slash lame. Old <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Vic talk, talked about the 10 foot pole and the length of rope. The length of rope gave me another, another idea, but that's probably. It's, an, it's a mature game. A hanging emote. Oh, mm. yeah. <laughs> Just grab the Medieval. rope and hang them. Medieval. Yep. <laughs> I, I do have to admit i would love to see you know with it being a mature game i would love to see not just gratuitous stuff but ways that they could look to put in some realistic mature type yeah. features into the game um you know things like you know would it make sense for there to be some kind of a a public you know, execution or something that happens mm -hmm. at a place. Yeah. Uh, would you go into an Arthurian city and there be a 
even if it's not something players can interact with, but if you went to Arthurian City, would there be an area with a stockade and and a TDD person hanging from a tree? Uh, <laughs> that would be nice. That would be a nice touch. It's a little ironic, but Bane and Boons. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Bane and Boons getting a Bane. You're missing one or two fingers. No, you and then you're actually missing one or two fingers. Yeah, yeah. Your character is actually missing one or two fingers. Uh, it's possible. Heads on pole, RP, yeah. Bane's or Boons. Yeah. The, the heads on pole is more of Viking stuff yeah, than yeah. Arthurian stuff. Yeah, Arthurians hang we're, them. We're Vikings stick their refined, head on a spike. We, we hang them. <laughs> The TDD just like bl full on blood eagle them and put them on display. Yeah. <laughs> Chest split well, the open blood and everything. Eagle is Viking, so. uh. <laughs> the TDD, I, I would, I would be more the the Japanese style, and planting, uh, tying them and planting a, a plant and making the plant grow in them. That's the kind of things for the TDD. At any yeah. rate, I think we we've about reached the end of the end of the topic, and we're getting yeah. over our time anyway. So I'm going to go ahead <laughs> and resources. end it off here. In two weeks, we have our 50th episode. Hopefully, we will yeah. have something um, yeah. cool for that. So we're not going to go ahead and reveal it now uh, because we're not sure that we will be able to do it. But we're hoping we'll have something special for that 50th episode. At mm. any rate, no, wait, what? <laughs> The return of Marvin the Martian. Uh, anyway, so thanks for coming out and hanging out with us, and hopefully we'll see most of you in two weeks.